Hello, I'm Christopher Thompson, and welcome to another edition of Chris Speaks, okay? Um, it's, uh, it's, sun it's Sunday, and it's a uh, week after the Unite the Right rally in Charlottesville, Virginia. I've been meaning to bring this up, talk about this for a while, but I wanted to wait till all this, we know all pretty much what was going on in the rally, and I'm glad I waited it because we got to see how much a hypocrite our president is. And, okay, so I finally did, I did some research. I had some points I wanted to make that I had to do a little bit of research and point out. Okay, so, basically, Charlottesville, Virginia, was, we're going to take down this statue of Robert E. Lee, which they probably should have made public because then they went all crazy, and, um, who was the leader of the Confederacy. And we'll get into whether they should have or shouldn't have, but, um, but anyways, so because of that, um, the Unite the Right rally happened where white nationalists, which, you know, conservatives always say that were politically correct, but they, they have a politically correct term called white nationalist, which is actually, uh, it's, a uh, politically correct version of white supremacist, but it's the same thing. And the alt-right, which are usually, that's a new thing that's developed on the internet and stuff. The internet's a big part of it, but they're also big white supremacists. Okay, so we had them gather, and there were counter-protesters that um, marched, and okay, I, I still see, have yet to see evidence on the other side Everything I shown, okay, it shows that the counter protests were standing there. One thing is to see the Nazis wielding Nazis and the KKK and whatever with shields and clubs were pushing them, pushing them, and start beating them with clubs. And then they started by fighting back. So I guess that's bad that they weren't just letting the people pummel them because that's what our president tells us, which will come up later. Um, and you know all the evidence. I've heard people say this, and there's been some people say on the right that it was the opposite, the other people attacked, whatever, but there's sure still no video or f photo evidence uh, to show the contrary, to show that that's actually what happened. Um, all the stuff I've seen shows the white supremacists starting it. All right, and um, at this same rally, a uh, young man who was in his 30s, I, I didn't go to get his name, I don't want to say his name. I don't want to give him credit. He's nothing. He's garbage. He doesn't deserve the publicity. I'll just mention the event. The event is he rammed his car into counter-protesters and into another car, um, and um, killing one person and injuring 19. And, it, and it's already being treated as, actually it's being treated as a uh, um, homicide too, it should be being treated as terrorism and they should punish him accordingly, but they're not going to because he's the wrong skin color and the wrong religion. Now, if he was a uh, uh, brown skin Muslim that plowed his um, crowd into a car, then they definitely charge him with terrorism and prove me wrong. There, there's a double standard in this country, even a triple standard. Okay, so... So he killed the people, and then there was, I believe it was around the same thing, there were random, two random black, young black guys that were just in a parking garage, and the white supremacists were walking by, and they just beat them up for no reason. And, okay, uh, next thing I have, uh, is our president, uh, he initially just condemned the violence, but said, all sides, on all sides, on all sides. Okay. Uh, all sides didn't beat the other side with clubs. All sides didn't plow their cars into protesters. All sides didn't random beat up random black people that they saw by because they're racist, evil assholes. No, that's not what happened, Mr. President. And, like, four days later, after being pressured by the media, why are you not condemning, why are you not condemning, then he condemns them, and, uh, and then, so he finally condemns the KKK and the neo-Nazis, and the hate is unacceptable, then a day after that, and this is after David Duke said, oh no, don't do that, Trump, please don't let them make you say that, 
it, it, it may have nothing to do with David Duke's thing, but it might because he wants to, he, he, he's, if he gets through this four years without being impeached or put in jail or anything, he's going to want to run again, and he's still going to want to want that, the white supremacist vote, because they are his base. And, uh, okay, so the next day, he's, after he condemned them, he blamed both sides, and then actually he attacked the left, more of us, and we're saying that even arguing against the reporters. He angrily, um, anger, he angrily um, argued that the violence was from, from what he called the alt-left. There is no alt-left. There's an alt-right, and it's called that by themselves. The people who came up with the idea alt-left is Fox News, and they don't know what they're talking about. No such thing as exi exists. And then he also said, well, the people on the side um, who were uh, part of the protest, uh, protesting the thing came down. Well, then they can't all be Nazis and all that. They must be decent human beings. Yes, because decent human beings, nice, normal people, march alongside neo-Nazis, clan members, other white supremacist groups that hate anyone who's not what they consider pure white, including Jews, which Jews, most Jews are white, but they're not the right kind of white. Um, they don't like anyone who's brown or anything. And if they find out, like, one of their own takes, like, a, uh, one of those ancestry tests that they get, they make sure they don't get, hang around anyone that has any black blood in it, which is funny, because they probably all do. And, uh, you know, maybe they shouldn't take those tests, because they'll probably kill themselves when they find out that they're not pure, whatever the hell that means. And he said, oh, well, what about the alt-left that was beating people with clubs? No, Mr. President. Those were the white supremacists who were beating people with clubs. Those are the people that did it. These decent people, and I'm calling people out, If, especially if you call yourself a Christian, and you're aligning yourself with somebody who's full of hate, somebody who protects Nazis, who stands up for Nazis, and the KKK, and all these racist groups, you're not a Christian. If you, if you say, oh, well, I'm not a racist, but you voted for a racist, misogynist, Islamophobe, homophobe. That's who you voted for. So obviously you agree with that or you wouldn't vote for the person. If you continue to support him, you obviously agree with what he's doing. If you don't agree with white supremacy, if you don't agree with misogyny, if you don't agree with Islamophobia, if you don't agree with um, xenophobia, which is a f fear of immigrants, which they, the uh, Trump presidency really does have, since now even legal immigration, they're trying to keep it down to only people who, one, have a lot of money, two, have a skill that's needed in this country, three, already speak perfect English. So yeah, and if you voted for him, and you support him, and you stand at him, you say you're not a racist, but you're obviously okay with it. You, you say you're not these things and that things, but you're obviously okay with it. And once again, our, our wonderful president, Donald Trump, yes, I'm being sarcastic, used his alternate facts, which means lies or just straight up bullshit. Okay, so now let's get down to the statues and what they represent and what the Confederacy represented. Okay, so you got many people in the South, you got a lot of people on the right saying, well, the statues are part of history. Well, yeah, but put them in their proper place. Put them in a museum uh, about the Civil War. Don't put them in front of courthouses or in city squares or in parks. And those statues weren't put up, like, during the Civil War or right after the Civil War. They were put up during the Jim Crow era. And the purpose of them was to glorify the Confederacy, whitewash history, and intimidate black people who still, under in the South, in the 40s, 50s, 60s, only not until, like, the middle of the 60s, did they finally get any kind of rights. So 
they weren't enslaved, but they weren't even free until, you know, they didn't even have any freedoms till the mid to late 60s. Okay, so that, and these statues, that's what they were for. They were put up there, like, in the 30s and 20s or whatever. And there's one, I think it's in uh, Massachusetts, they say that because it's on a uh, national park. I guess they couldn't tear it down, but they covered it up. Um, and this goes, it's funny, I just watched this video, and this goes into what I'm getting into next, is that was uh, put up by... I think the Daughters of the Confederacy or something. And they're the first people to say that the South didn't secede over slaves. They seceded because of state strikes. Um, they're partially right on that. They were, uh, they did secede because of state rights. The state right they wanted was slavery. Straight up, that's, that's what they wanted. And... And... Hold on, let me get to my things. Okay. Uh, yeah, like, I, okay, I was going to they, they claim that it has absolutely nothing to do um, with slavery. It was state rights. It was other things. Uh, but I am still going to stand with uh, the real facts, which are they seceded from the Union because of slavery. I will back that up with facts in a second. And... I, I hope they didn't let it pass, but here this insane, incompetent um, Texas school board that we had tried to change the history books to not refer to slaves as slaves, but to refer them as migrant workers. Oh, they were just migrant workers that were forced to work with no pay, were forced to work long hours, were forced to eat nasty-ass food were not treated right, were whipped, who had their feet cut off when they tried to run away. This is the reality of things. You don't believe me, let's take it from the, the secessionists themselves. Let's, let's get here and let's get to the bottom. I'm going to read some of this stuff and some of it I'm going to paraphrase, okay? This is the South Carolina secessionist statement. Uh, this one I'll read all the way through. The other ones I'm going to have to cut to the important parts. This is going to be the longest video in history. Okay, this is the South Carolina secessionist statement, why they seceded from the Union. The ends for which the Constitution was framed are declared by itself to be to form a more perfect union, excuse me, uh, to form a more perfect union, establish justice, and ensure domestic tranquility, provide the common defense, promote general welfare, secure the blessings of liberty, our citizens, and our posterity. These ends endeavored uh, uh, to accomplish by a federal government in which each state recognizes as equal and separate control over its institutions. Okay, that sounds fine right now, but here we go. Here we go into it. The right of property in slaves was recognized by, um, by giving to free persons distinct political rights by giving them the right to represent and burdening them with direct taxes for three-fifths of their slaves by authoring, the, authorizing the importation of slaves for 20 years and by stipulating the rendition of fugitives for labor. Uh, I believe they're referring to the fugitive state, the fugitive slave law, which means if a slave went up above the north, above the Mason-Dixon line, that they, people in the north would be forced to f go hunt them down and turn them back over to the south, okay? This is still from the South Carolina secessionists. We affirm that the ends for which this government was instituted have been defeated and the government itself has been made destructive by the actions of the non-slaveholding states. Those states have assumed the right of deciding upon the property of domestic institutions, have denied the rights of property established 15 states recognized by the Constitution. They have denounced a sinful institution of slavery. They have permitted open establishment among them of societies, those endowed, object to disturb the peace and to avoid whatever the property of citizens of the states. Once again, let me reiterate. This property they're talking about is human beings, black human beings who were not treated like human beings. They have encouraged and assisted thousands of slaves to leave their homes, and those who remain have been 
incited by emissaries, books, and pictures to servile insurrection. Yeah, because they didn't like being owned and beat and overworked and not paid and being fed and made to eat freaking ham hocks and pigtail and freaking, uh, what do they call that? Um, chitlins, which are pig intestines, because they were tired of that shit. They were tired of being treated like their property. Okay, well, that's one thing. Okay, so that might not be everything, right? So, what we need to do is let's go to the next one. This is the Mississippi secessionist statement. This was the state of Mississippi saying why they're seceding from the Union. These are the individual states, uh, their statements. Okay, here we go. From Mississippi, in the momentous step by which our states have taken of dissolving its connection with the government of which we so long formed a part is just that we should declare the prominent reasons why he, we have induced our course. Our position is thoroughly, thoroughly identified with the institution of, you got it, slavery. But wait a second, all you people in the South with your Confederate flags running are saying that it's not about slavery, but this is the state of Mississippi. This is the state of Mississippi saying it themselves. In it identified with the institution of slavery, the greatest material interest of the world is labor supplied by the product which constitutes by far the largest, most important portion of commerce of the earth. These products are peculiar to the climate verging on tropical regions and by the imperious laws of nature, none but the black race can bear exposure to the tropical sun. These products have become necessities of the world, at a blow, and a blow at slavery is a blow at commerce and civilization. The blow has been long aimed at the institution and was at the point of reaching its consummation. There was no choice left but submission, mandates, abolition, or the disillusion of the Union, whose principles have been subverted to work out our ruin, that we do not overstate the dangers to our institution, a reference a few facts su sufficiently prove. Okay, here's we got more, and I'll get one more state, the Texas Secessionist Statement, a wife of Texas was seceding from the Union, and then if you don't believe me, we'll go straight to Alexander uh, Statement by Alexander H. Stevens, which is called the cornerstone approach, the, excuse me, the cornerstone speech. Okay, but before we, let's go to Texas. Texas' is a secessionist statement. If you're not as convinced yet, here we go. The Texas, why Texas um, seceded from the Union, we hold as undeniable truths that the government of various states and the Confederacy itself were established exclusively by the white race for themselves as their posterity, that the African race had no agency in their establishment, that they were rightfully held and regarded as inferior and a dependent race, and in that condition um, only could their existence in this country be rendered beneficial or tolerable. And it goes on to this, saying that in a that in this free government, all white men and are and of right ought to be entitled to equal civil and political rights. That that the servitude of the African race as existing in these states this. Uh, is mutually beneficial to both the bond and free, and abundantly authorized and justified by the experience of mankind, and reveled, revealed will the Almighty Creator as recognized by all Christian nations, while the destruction of existing relations between the two races, as advocated by our sectional enemies, would bring inevitable calamities upon both and dissolution upon the 15 slaveholding states. Okay, so we have three statements from states of why they seceded from the Union. So far, they've all stated slavery is the main reason. 
but we're constantly told by people who fly the Confederate flag and are about um, Southern pride about how it's not about slavery. Okay, so here we go. This is an excerpt from um, the Cornerstone speech by Alexander H. Stevens. I just cut to the point because it's a very long speech. And here's, he's talking about the, the South, the Confederacy, its cornerstone rests upon the great truth that the Negro is not equal, that slavery and subordination to the superior race is his natural and normal condition. His natural and normal condition. They are slay, saying that the whole purpose of black people being there was to be the slaves to the white people. Okay, so that's coming from three different states that's coming from the it, that's coming from the vice president of the confederacy so no the um the confederacy the secession from the union had everything to do with slaves everything to do with slavery it was not about state rights the only state right they were worried about was their right to own human beings and this is what you're fighting for when you're fighting for these statues these statues that i'm gonna once again let you know were not put there during the civil war after the civil war they were put there in the 20th century during the jim crow era putting in places of um parks and town squares and in front of court houses to glorify and whitewash the Confederacy and the Civil War and to intimidate black people so they can keep them in their place. That's what it's all about. That was what the Confederacy is about. And that's what these guys who were protesting there in Charlotte, the removal of things, these Nazis and these um, KKK members, alt-right, white nationalists, which is, like I said, is just a politically correct term for white supremacists. That's what they're for. That's what they're standing up for. That's what they care about. That's how they feel. They believe that they are superior to every other race and that they're this wonderful, pure white race, which I'm pretty sure nobody in this country, is, if there's even such thing as a pure race, nobody is. Not in this country. But... Yeah, so anytime someone comes to argue about, well, the Civil War was about states' rights, yes, you tell them, yes, it was. It was about the states' rights to own slaves, to own human beings, and to treat these human beings worse than their um, livestock. So yeah, that's what that's about. That's what white supremacists are about. That's what that whole rally was about. Now, this is, this is the end of this. I know it's been kind of long. It's, what, going on 23 minutes here, but I really had to get this off my chest. I had to say what needed to be said. Okay, I'll see you guys around. Hang in there till next time.